In this video, I'm going to be repairing the power jack on this Atari 2600. It's coming up right now on Retro Hack Shack After Hours. Well, hey everybody, my name's Aaron. Welcome back to Retro Hack Shack After Hours. This should be a simple video today, really. If you watch one of my previous videos where I found a bunch of stuff at eWaste, including two Atari 2600s like this, these four switch models, uh, we found that one of them was working and one of them had a loosey-goosey power connection. And when I wiggled the cable, it was constantly resetting the device and wasn't actually working. So today I thought what I would do is just do a quick video, show people how they can repair that quickly and easily, and then I'll also show you a few things to look for along the way for some simple, quick refurb of a Atari 2600. So let's start out today by making sure that the problem that we had is still actually happening. And so for that, I pulled out my 70s TV. Again, just a reminder, I haven't fixed everything on this TV so uh, the colors are a little bit off and stuff like that, but that's not the problem we're diagnosing today. What we're diagnosing is whether the video connection was working or not. So that shouldn't be a problem. So I think I've got everything hooked up. Let me just go ahead and put the power supply in, turn this on. And yeah, you can see it kind of came on. I've got River Raid in here to test with, but there we go. And if I hold the power switch up in this position, uh, even though the colors are off, ignore that. We can see that the game does work if I let go it disconnects. So there's a problem definitely with the power jack here. I've ordered another power jack from eBay. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And it has arrived. And here it is. Here's what it should look like. You can, Like I said, you can still buy these. Uh, sometimes they're new old stock. I don't know if they actually are new old stock, but this should fit. What you're looking for is a kind of a mono audio jack, eighth inch audio jack, which is what these power supplies essentially used on the end of them was a TPR, tip and ring kind of jack. And this is the one that you're looking for because it has these three connections on the bottom, which should slot perfectly into the Atari 2600 PCB so that we can replace this jack. So I've got everything disconnected. I've already taken the screws out of this unit. And uh, if you did watch that previous video, you'll notice that the this is much cleaner than the way I found it at eWaste. I've completely cleaned this up and it's really easy to clean these older style cases. They're all plastic. Um, there's some labels and some things here you need to be careful of, but nothing that you can't stick under running water when you take the case apart. So for this, you can just turn this over. There's four screws, one, two, three, four. Took those out, no problem. And if I shake this a little bit, cause it sticks. Woo, that sounded more violent than it actually was. It should come out. And I did be sure to tape the old screws in here so that I could find them again easily. And this should just now come out of here. You can set the top of the case there. And to free up the bottom side of the case, it has just a standard RCA jack here. And you can unplug that and then take it out of the back of the case. If you've never seen an Atari 2600 naked in the wild, this is, like I said, this is that four switch model. And I've gone ahead and taken this off. And actually, you should have four of these pads. And obviously, those came off in the case. Yep, here they are. They're just felt pads that go over the top of these switches. And they do two things. They make it look a little bit better, but they also prevent dust and dirt from getting into these switches, which does happen over time. If you've seen my 10 things you didn't know videos about Atari, uh, this was built to uh, a price point. And this is the slim down version, which uses fewer components and less shielding than the original heavy sixer or even the six switch, I guess a light sixer is what it's called, that came out before this particular model. But they all use the same basic architecture and chips and they're designed to be interchangeable, of course, and work and play the same game. So all of that is the same on all of these models. It's just that as they continued the Atari 2600 line, it got smaller and smaller. The Junior, Atari Junior is only about this big. I don't even know if it has any shielding, but certainly not this thick shielding. Anyway, what we need to do today is focus our attention on the power jack, which is right here. 
And so I'm going to put these pads aside so I don't lose them. And we'll turn the board over and get this thing off the board. So there are typically two things that can go wrong here. One is that the jack itself can fail internally. And the other is that these connections on the back can have cracked solder joints. And of course, if you had one of these as a kid, you know that we were kind of rough on these. Sometimes you'd trip over the cord or yank it out without really <laughs> being too gentle. And so those solder joints on the back can crack and the jack itself uh, can either get cracked or have internal problems that make that connection really loose. And that appears to be what's going on here. In order to get this jack out, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a soldering iron, first of all, and then it helps to have a little flux if you have that available. And you'll also need some solder braid. The solder braid will help get rid of the existing solder that's on there and loosen up those connections so you can get the old jack out and then put the new one in. Even if your solder braid that you're using has flux built in, I found that it's helpful to apply some of this liquid flux anyway because the flux in that solder braid can dry out under the high heat that you're going to be applying with your soldering iron and so it just makes your life a whole lot easier. So once you've got the flux down there and you've got your solder braid in place, you just apply your soldering iron to the joint and it should get sucked up into the wick. Once you can see that all the solder is removed, you can try wiggling a little bit like I do here with these needle nose pliers. And I can see that all these joints are very loose and so the part came out very easily. If the part does not wiggle and you can't see movement in the joint, then go back and try again until you've got enough solder removed that the part moves easily. Now we can put the new jack back in the place where the old one was, turn the board over and solder it in place. Once your soldering's done, be sure to clean up with a little isopropyl alcohol and something that can absorb all of that residual flux. I'm using a little cotton swab here that does a pretty good job. If you have a lot of joints to clean, it's good to maybe hit them with a little bit of an old toothbrush or something to kind of loosen up that flux before you remove it from the board. Before I test to see if my repairs worked, I want to thank the sponsor of this episode, PCBWay. PCBWay offers high quality, low cost prototype PCBs and a whole lot more. As you already know, they sponsor a lot of smaller channels here on YouTube. So give them a try for your next PCB order. And I thank them for their support of the Retro Hack Shack. At this point, I wanted to check just to make sure that my work was done correctly and there was no problems. And sure enough, the game comes right on. I can actually wiggle the power cord around in the jack and there's no more problems with the power coming on and off. So yeah, I think the main problem here is fixed. Now we can do a little bit of restoration to this thing to make sure that it lasts for years to come. The first thing I want to do is turn my attention to the switches. The switches can oxidize and like I said, some dirt and corrosion can fall in there even if those felt pads are in place. So what you want to do is grab some deoxid. I have some here in this handy little bottle that you can buy to make the application easier so it doesn't go all over the place. And you just put a few drops, maybe two, three, four drops in each of the switches and then move them rapidly back and forth 20 or so times. And that should clean the contacts inside the switches and help them last a long time. The next thing I would recommend is putting some deoxid on this jack that connects the RCA cable to the TV. And you can do that simply by adding some deoxid both to the inside and outside of the jack and then working it around by plugging the cable in and out as you can see here. The other thing you may want to do is tighten the connections on this particular plug so that it fits nice and snug. The last thing you want is for this plug to become loose or disconnected inside your console after you put it together. That could really ruin your day. And it's pretty simple just to bend these little prongs in a little bit to create more pressure around that jack. As you're putting things back together, you want to pay attention to these little plastic slots here. Those are meant to hold that RCA cable in place and act as strain relief so that in case someone trips over the cord, as I'm sure I did many times as a kid, you won't actually pull that cord out of that plug or perhaps even remove that whole jack from the board by ripping it off. I've seen several Ataris come in that have obviously been worked on and the person who worked on them forgot to do the strain relief and that definitely could cause a problem later on. Now it's time to put everything back together, but this can be a little tricky as you need to line everything up 
with the holes in the top and bottom of the case. And so the easiest way I found to do this is by lining up the connections in the back of the board with the cutouts in the case. If you start with that and then put the top on around those, it seems like everything goes together pretty easily. Otherwise, you end up misaligning the screw holes and then you've got to start all over. So try it this way and see if that works. You can hold the board in place just by using your thumb and putting a little bit of pressure like this, like I'm doing here. That will hold it in place so that when you put the top back down, it aligns perfectly. Also, don't do what I did and forget to put those little black felt pads over the switches. They are important to keep the unit clean and keep those switches clean. So yeah, don't forget to do that. Otherwise, you'll have to take it all apart again. When you're putting the screws back in, just keep in mind that you're gonna want to back the screw off a little bit first until you hear a click and then screw it in the rest of the way. This will make it much easier to put the screws back in and you won't run the risk of stripping out those threads if you were just to force the screw in. Now that this Atari 2600 is back together, one thing you might want to consider is repainting this spline around the unit. You can see that it originally had kind of an orange yellow color added to it from the factory and that wears off quite easily over time as kids like me with dirty hands and greasy fingers get in here and play games. So you can easily add that color back in with a paint marker. There's a couple different ones you can choose from. Just keep in mind that actually if you own a heavy sixer, the original color that was used on that is a little bit lighter. And so if you have a choice of markers to use, you might want to pick one that matches your particular console as closely as possible. Just keep in mind that these paint markers will take a while to cure. I like to lay them sit for at least two weeks, even though they dry to the touch overnight, because I find that if I don't, that that paint that I put on will come off really easily. So give it a few weeks before you let it loose on your kids and allow that paint to cure fully. And there you go, we've repaired this Atari 2600, fixed the power jack, and done a little bit of future proofing and restoration in the process. And now this is ready to be passed on to someone else to relive their childhood. I hope you liked that episode. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks to all my patrons and check out this other video over here in the corner if you want to know more about doing mods or fixing things up or anything about the Atari. And I really appreciate all your support. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. End of line.